This podcast was recorded and provided by the National Association of Regional Councils. For more information about NARC, please visit narc.org. Hello, everybody. This is Autumn Campbell, Director of Community Programs with the National Association of Regional Councils. Welcome to the first installment in our solar podcast series for 2014. These podcasts are brought to you as part of the U.S. Department of Energy's Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnership. Through this partnership, NARC is working with the International City and County Management Association, the American Planning Association, and ICLEI, Local Governments for Sustainability, to support local governments in increasing solar deployment in their communities nationwide. Today I am joined by Philip Haddock from the Solar Foundation to talk about the Foundation's most recent solar job census, which has been released annually since 2010. Philip is Manager of Outreach and Policy at the Solar Foundation, an independent national 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to increase understanding of solar energy through strategic research that educates the public and transforms markets. Founded in 1977, the Foundation is a leading research organization on the solar labor force, employer trends, and economic impacts of the solar industry. Philip has played a key role in producing each of the two most recent national solar job census reports and the three state solar job census reports recently released for California, Arizona, and Minnesota. And he ensures the foundation continues to play a strong role in the U.S. Department of Energy's Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnership. Thanks so much for joining us today, Philip. Uh, thanks. Pleasure to be here. Great. So we'll jump right in. Um, and first question about the solar job census, the most recent report is, can you explain what exactly the job census is and give us an overview of how it's compiled and tell us why it's important? Sure. So the National Solar Job Census is our annual award-winning report, uh, which counts the number of solar workers across the U.S. Uh, solar value chain. Uh, we track jobs in installation, manufacturing, sales and distribution, project development, and other ancillary jobs that support solar, including research and development, legal and finance positions, uh, people in government, nonprofits, and academia. So our latest report, census 2013, found that the U.S. solar industry employed 142,698 solar workers as of November 2013. This figure represents a 20% increase in employment over the previous year, showing that employment in solar grew 10 times faster than in the overall economy. So for the census, uh, the term solar worker has a very specific definition and is defined as those workers who spend at least 50% of their time on solar-related activities. In the past, we have received a bit of criticism that our definition causes jobs to be overcounted. Uh, what we have found since then, however, is that just over 90% of those who meet our definition of a solar worker in 2013 actually spend 100% of their time on solar. So it's a definition that we're pretty happy with. The data underpinning the census is collected through an annual survey of both companies from our database of known solar employers and of companies in industry classification, such as wholesale trade, construction, and manufacturing that are most likely to employ solar workers but do not identify primarily as a solar company. This year's census was our most comprehensive effort yet. We placed nearly 74,000 phone calls and sent over 11,000 emails, ultimately collecting data from about 15,000 respondents. As for its importance, we feel the census is important because employment, as everyone knows, is a fundamental metric in determining the overall health of an economy. It is also important because our methodology is considered to be highly rigorous. This means our numbers are taken seriously by policymakers and other relevant stakeholders. Not only are our jobs reports the definitive go-to resource for policymakers based with evaluating the economic value of certain energy legislation, but it provides them with tangible proof that the solar industry having a positive impact on the U.S. economy. Great, thank you. And that is a lot of phone calls and emails that it takes to come up with this report. I didn't make those phone calls. <laughs> so what are a few of the most striking findings and trends that you've identified through the job census? Uh, to me, uh, one of the most impressive findings is the overall growth in employment we've seen since we started doing the census in 2010. Uh, since that report, Employment in solar has grown by 53%, a figure that represents the addition of nearly 50,000 jobs. It's important to keep in mind that when we talk about the jobs numbers associated with the census, these numbers include most of the direct jobs and many of the indirect jobs in the solar industry, uh, with the exception of some indirect jobs in the component and material supply chain. 
So if we were to fully account for indirect impacts and to add in induced labor impacts of solar, this would add about 435,000 additional jobs, bringing total direct, indirect, and induced jobs to nearly 600,000. As one would imagine, increased employment in solar is a function of growth in new installed solar capacity, but is also tied to labor efficiency. What we continue to find as the solar industry continues to grow is that installers are becoming more efficient, increasing productivity for, from 51.3 kilowatts per worker to 62.3 kilowatts, which is a 21.5% improvement between 2012 and 2013, meaning that it takes fewer workers to install a given amount of solar than were required in the past. Finally, some interesting bits of information can be found in some of the new aspects of solar employment we began tracking in the latest census effort. The solar industry, for example, was found to be a significant employer of veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. The more than 13,000 veterans employed in solar represents 9.2% of all solar workers. In the overall economy, by comparison, veterans constitute only 7.6% of the total employed population. Finally, we're also finding that solar employers on average are paying competitive wages. The typical solar installer is reported to earn between $20 and almost $24 per hour, which is more or less on par with the wages paid to skilled electricians and plumbers, and is significantly higher than what roofers, carpenters, or other construction laborers earn on average. Uh, production and assembly workers, that is those who are employed in the manufacturing sector, earn a bit less than installers, between $15 and just over $18 per hour, but slightly more than the national average for electrical and electronic equipment assemblers. Great. So obviously the solar industry has experienced much higher than average growth and expansion than other industries. Can you talk about why that's happening and what the outlook for employment growth in the industry is in the future? Sure. The primary reason for all this growth in solar employment is the tremendous demand for solar. Total installed capacity in the U.S. at the end of 2013 was expected to be about 13,000 megawatts, enough to power approximately 2 million American households. About 5,000 megawatts, or about 40% of this total installed capacity, were installed in 2013 alone. So what's fueling this demand? In our census 2012, we found that one-third of solar companies cited declines in component prices as the primary driver of industry growth. As I'm sure you know, solar module costs have fallen dramatically over the past several years, declining by nearly 70% since we published our first census report in 2010. We've seen a similar decline in installed costs, which have come down by about 50% over the same period. In this year's census, companies cited the increasingly positive financial aspects of going solar as the leading reason their customers are choosing to adopt solar. In the past, companies have also cited state legislation, such as renewable portfolio standards and policies allowing for third-party ownership of solar energy systems as another key driver of growth, as well as federal consumer tax incentives. As for the future, solar employers are optimistic about hiring, with about 45% of firms expecting to add solar employees over the next 12 months. By contrast, only about 2% expect to cut solar workers over the same period. So we project that these positive hiring expectations will translate into 15.6% uh, overall growth in employment, bringing the total number of solar workers in 2014 to about 165,000. Well, that's exciting. Even though this growth has been really aggressive, can you talk about some barriers or setbacks the industry is facing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so and since this 2012, we included in our survey questions just about exactly this, about the barriers to growth. And solar companies reported that general economic conditions were the most commonly cited barrier to industry growth, with about one in four companies citing this reason. Uh, other common barriers were the lack of consumer incentives for solar and a lack of consumer awareness of solar products and services. Thank you. So how does solar industry job growth compare to other energy industries? both fossil fuel and other renewables? Yeah, this is a great question and one we get quite a bit, but unfortunately, kind of a difficult one to answer with much certainty. Uh, currently, the Bureau of Labor Statistics does not yet track all renewable energy jobs, and methodologies used in other studies 
uh, can differ significantly between one another. So it's difficult to make this apples to apples comparison. Uh, that said, uh, to the best of our ability, we're confident that the solar industry stands out as a leading job creator in the U.S. economy, especially when compared to other energy industries. Uh, as an example, more Americans work in solar than in coal mining. Again, we have uh, about 143,000 versus about 90,000 in coal mining. Uh, and in the last year, solar added about 24,000 workers, while the fossil fuel generation sector shed about 8,500 jobs. As far as other renewables are concerned, solar remains a leader, and potentially the leader, in employment. The latest figures from the Renewable Fuels Association show that that industry supports approximately 87,000 direct jobs and about an equivalent number of indirect jobs for a total of about 147,000 workers. Uh, while this number is higher than solar's 143,000-ish, we'll keep in mind that our methodology currently does not include all indirect jobs in solar. So the actual total for solar is likely a bit higher. The most recent figures for the wind industry, the total direct and indirect employment at 75,000 workers, but these numbers haven't been updated since 2011. Uh, the geothermal industry supports about 25,000 workers, but again, this number hasn't been updated in a while. Uh, for those who are interested, there's a great website called energyfactcheck.org that lists the jobs estimates across renewable energy and debunks many false claims made about solar and other renewables. Thank you for that reference. Can you give us an idea of what employee growth looks like? For example, are employees coming in totally new to the industry? Are they retrained from other industries? Are they specially trained? Are special skills required? What does that demographic typically represent? So there are multiple ways in which someone could enter the solar industry. Uh, some are entry-level jobs, and some are making lateral career moves from other industries uh, that are focused on high-tech construction or finance. Uh, in general, though, these are highly skilled positions, mostly blue and white-collar jobs, that pay well uh, and provide the building blocks for a career. Our census research found that half of the new workers uh, employed required previous work experience related to the position they now fill. Uh, just over one quarter required at least a bachelor's degree, and about 13% required an associate's degree or a certificate from an accredited college. That said, the industry is incredibly diverse with opportunities for people with varying degrees of experience or education. So how does solar industry growth in the U.S. compare to industry growth globally? This is another difficult question to answer, and one we also get quite a bit. This is mostly because commonly cited global renewable employment figures are totals from different reports, different quality, with different methods. Uh, what I do know, though, is that the most recent REN21, and REN is Renewable Energy Policy Network for the 21st century, their most recent global status report found that solar worldwide supports about 2.3 million jobs, of which the U.S. accounts for about 5%. Are there certain areas of the country that are experiencing more rapid growth than others? And if so, can you give us an idea of why that's occurring? Sure. So growth in solar jobs is occurring all over the place. Uh, between 2012 and 2013, 45 out of 50 states added jobs. Uh, this growth in jobs is broad as well. Uh, it's occurring in all markets, regardless of market maturity, for example, uh, strong traditional solar markets like California and Hawaii and even New Jersey added jobs. Uh, up and coming markets like Massachusetts, Georgia, North Carolina also added jobs. And even slowly emerging markets like Minnesota, Louisiana, and Missouri saw employment growth. It's also happening in all regions of the country in the West. Of course, California, uh, Hawaii, Washington, places like this. Uh, in the central U.S., in Missouri and Ohio, there was significant job growth. Uh, in the south and in the east, all over the country. And it's re occurring regardless of political affiliation as well, in both red and blue states. Again, Massachusetts, California, New York, and Vermont are seeing job growth, as well as red states like Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Texas, et cetera. The point of all this is that regardless of where this growth is occurring, what all of the top 10 solar job states have in common is a collection of policy tools designed to support solar. So on that point, how can regional governments and regions start incorporating solar as a tool for economic development? 
Are there opportunities to build more robust solar clusters where there aren't currently clusters? So last fall, the um, International Economic Development Council, or IEDC, published a report on better aligning renewable energy firms with economic developers, which the Solar Foundation co-funded and co-produced, along with a number of other organizations. So through this research effort, solar companies were surveyed on what local policies or economic development programs were most helpful for growth. Employers noted that a streamlined permitting process and supportive state and local policies and incentives were most important for company growth at the local level. They also cited financial incentives for attraction or expansion as the most important state or regional policy tool. Uh, additionally, when asked what types of economic development programs would help their companies grow, employers pointed to formal strategic plans for growing renewable energy within the state. So by addressing any or all of these issues, uh, local, regional, or state entities can help bring more solar employers to their areas. Great. So could you walk us through some of your recommendations for local, state, and federal policymakers to encourage continued growth in the solar industry? Sure. So based on our research in previous years, we make a number of specific recommendations to policymakers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the commonly cited key drivers for growth are state policies and federal policies that benefit solar. So given this, our primary recommendation is for the implementation of strong, transparent, and stable demand-side policies. Policies that have all three of these characteristics will emphasize stability and will allow an employer to plan how it expands its workforce and when. Another recommendation we make is for policymakers to support solar company economic development needs, uh, treat them as an important tax-paying entities and com uh, entities that can bring uh, new job opportunities to the area. Uh, and finally, it's important to continue to invest in solar workforce development where it's needed. Uh, again, as our reports show, just over 50% of solar jobs require workers with previous experience, about 25% require at least a bachelor's degree, and about one in eight will require an associate's degree or other certification from an accredited college. Given this, programs that stand to make the greatest impact on solar workforce development are those that provide high-skilled workers with new or updated skills or experience, and comprehensive entry-level programs, typically offered through uh, technical high schools, community-based organizations, or community colleges, that prepare lower-skilled workers to move into more highly-skilled occupations. Well, great. Thanks so much. It's been terrific talking with you today. To learn more about Philip, the rest of the team at the Solar Foundation, and their work, visit www.thesolarfoundation.org. You can also find out more about the Sunshot Solar Outreach Partnerships work at solaroutreach.org and click on resources or go to narc.org slash solar ops. Thanks everyone and we look forward to our next podcast exploring more about ways to help you increase solar in your communities. Thank you for listening. For more information about NARC, please visit narc.org.